So in this video, we'll continue our discussion on the Gaussian elimination to solve the linear system. And uh, the way I ask the questions is slightly different in this video. Please look at the current problem. You see, I'm not giving you all the coefficients in the linear system, which is already given in the matrix form. And A is certain unknown, which is the coefficient for the Y term, right? And I would like to ask for the values of A such that this system will have exactly one solution or infinitely many solutions or no solution. So are you able to find such a value of A? And um, instead of writing the matrix form back to the equation form, we can directly carry out the Gaussian elimination here, which means we have to make the bottom left corner zero. And in that case, I think the easiest way to make um, to make it zero by the row operation is by using row two minus four times row one, right? So I can do row two minus four times row one to update the row two. So I keep the row one unchanged. And for the row two, now the first spot is zero. The second spot is what? Row two is A minus four times row one. Row one is uh, two, right? So it means uh, it's basically A minus eight for the coefficient for the y term. And the last one is the right hand side, which is row two, which is six minus four times row one, which is three. So it's six minus 12, which is minus six, right? And please look at the current system. The Gaussian elimination process is basically done. If you write it in the um, equation form, um, maybe you can see what's happening. For example, uh, let's just look at the second equation for now. Basically, in equation form, you're having a system like this, and y algebraically is the same as minus 6 over a minus 8, right? So it means what? Uh, please look at the system carefully now. You see such a solution algebraically only valid if a is not 8. Because if a is not 8, then the denominator is non-zero. Then we get uh, one solution for y, right? Which is uh, exactly the same as minus 6 divided by a minus 8 in that case. And from this fixed value, we can actually find the um, x by using the first equation, right? So, so it means what? It, um, when a is not 8, we actually get exactly one set of solution, theoretically speaking. And um, the remaining value of A we haven't looked at is the possibility that A is 8. And let's check what's happening when A is 8 now. So you see, let's come back to the matrix form here. If A is 8, what we are having is a system where the second row has uh, zeros in the left-hand side. However, the right side is non-zero, right? So if you go back to the equation form, the second row in that we have an equation 0 equals minus 6, which uh, does not make sense at all. It means this system is actually inconsistent in the sense that you actually have no solution. So uh, let's put the answer at the top here. So it basically means that uh, we have no solution when A is actually 8. And let's look at one more practice problems on this. So please look at the current problem now. Uh, it is somewhat similar to the last example. You need to find the unknown to make the system either has exactly one solution or has infinitely many solutions or has no solution at all. And uh, once again, we have to carry out the Gaussian elimination first. You can keep the first row unchanged and to make the bottom left corner zero. You can try to think of what kind of row operation you need. So uh, let me put in the numbers here. I think to make it zero, we need something like plus three times two, right, for the minus six to get zero here. So um, the correct row operation is row two plus three times row one. And in that case, uh, we successfully make the bottom left corner zero. And for this spot, it's going to be nine three times minus three, right? Because you see uh, the number on the second column um, for the row one is minus three. And this one uh, is actually zero also. And how about the last one? The last one for row two is k plus three times row one, which is five, which means it looks like it's k plus 15, right? So let me put it here. And now please look at this system. And if you write it in terms of equations, let's focus on the second equation. The second equation now looks like zero equals k plus 15, right? And uh, let's think about such a equation for a moment. 
The fact is that we cannot change anything on the left hand side of row two. The row two always has zero as the coefficient for both x, y. It means um, the left hand side must be zero anyway. So let's think about that. If, if k is not minus 15, then it means we have something like zero in the left hand side equals something non zero, right? Because k is not the same as minus 15, essentially means that k plus 15 is non zero, right? Which is uh, this number, right? So uh, that's why in that case we get a strange equation which is the same as, uh, as zero equals non zero, but um, it makes no sense, right? So it means uh, in the case where k is minus 15, k is not the same as minus 15, we actually get no solution at all. So I put it here, for the system to have no solution, k cannot be the same as minus 15. And um, let's look at the remaining possibility, which is the possibility where k is actually minus 15. In that case, on the second equation here, we are getting zero equals zero, right? Because this one is equivalent to k plus 15 equals zero, which is the right-hand side of the equation, right? And we have mentioned such a fact for a few times already in the previous videos. The fact is that when you have zero equals zero, it is correct. It makes the system consistent still, but this fact carries no extra information for us to find extra solutions or uh, for the system. So in that case, it means uh, the second equation, we don't have to care about it at all. We just care about the first equation, which is 2x minus 3y equals 5. So you see we have only one equation, but two unknowns, right? And it means we don't have enough number of equations to determine uh, all the unknowns. And um, in that case, um, in this case, um, it means we actually have infinitely many solutions. So it basically means as a conclusion, when k is actually the same as minus 15, the system will have infinitely many solutions. And the first scenario is not possible to occur in our system here.